Go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Electric Live, the live shmup talk show. And uh, please be sure to think of your hot takes as we go throughout the recording here, because we're going to do a live hot take section at the end. But I'd like to begin by introducing today's guest, Zarok, a fellow Western shmup player and, in my opinion, an incredible um, player, especially when it comes to breaking down new games that came out that come out and also playing games that are sort of shmup adjacent or shmup like, which is the topic of today's video. So welcome to the show, Zarok. How's it going? All right. Thanks. Nice to be on the show again. Yeah. At least on a stream. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the subject matter here too. Like, I'm interested in what's going on with the shmup related games recently, or like how how new games take elements from shmups. Like sometimes they do it quite well nowadays. Yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. of whenever I go to these types of things, I think there's sort of three people I always keep in mind. Um, myself, I have my own channel with like uh, these types of games on them that I feature. Uh, your channel for sure. Um, I watched your Sin and Punishment uh, replays and stuff and all those types of games. You have a lot like that. And also for beat em ups, I go to Iconoclast channel because he has all these great beat em up uh, replays and everything like that. So I think the, the first place to begin is let's talk about a series that I think is criminally underrated that viewers will see playing behind me in the stream here which is the Sin and Punishment series, because I think both of us have played this a good amount and uh, probably have quite a bit to say about it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I haven't played the first game that much, but um, the first game is really interesting scoring. Like It like feels like a score attack game. You, you're going yes. through enemies really quick, and uh, there's like bonus score items everywhere, and the difficulties feel really unique. And it's like half an hour, I think. Like if you play it through it quickly. Yeah, yeah. It's, like it's much. It's much enough. quicker than Star Successor, which goes. Yeah, it's like an arcade on game. First game, on, it's like an yeah. arcade game. Second, Star Successor is like treasure, just being crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So let's actually talk about the length. What do you think about the length of this series, and also the length of these style of games? What well, it's not just with rail shooters. I've also noticed with beat 'em ups. The new trend now is sort of to double the length or to instead mm -hmm. of going from 40 minutes to 30 minutes these games are now pushing an hour an hour 10 sometimes an hour 20. um what do you think about the increased length as far as i guess playability versus marketability i assume is the uh, reason behind the increased length yeah i think it might be like the longer length games are going for like a like a epic journey kind of thing like like the the player gets invested in the game and then it's like whoa what is this finale like in Star Trek the last stage is like absolutely crazy yes and you spend like w like ninety minutes getting there and the game is like, whoa, whoa. so I think there's some like payoff for being a long game but then it's less arcadey so I think the shorter games are more you know more arcade game influence like beat 'em up is obviously arcade game yes and especially when it comes to roots. something like Star Successor for example. I remember, I think even in the video description of your uh, hard clear, wasn't it a hard clear? Where you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if this game is meant to be played like this, but here we go. Yeah, I can't recommend, like, uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't think, oh yeah, yeah, it was, I, I didn't recommend playing for score for two hours. Yes, game. exactly. Like, that's like a bad, I, I don't, it's not an enjoyable thing in like any genre is a two hour run. Yeah, I've done a speed run like that as well. So like, it's pretty painful. Yeah. Restarts take a long time. Like I like generally I like 30, like 20 30 minutes games. So I like that length. It's like Yeah, and it, really slow. it's really I, I see people talking res talk about Res and Child of Eden. Those are like those are some pretty schmuppy. Yeah, Res. I as well. have you played Res? Cuz I Yeah, I played a lot. And Child of Eden it. as well. Yeah, Child of Eden. That that game slept on cuz it's like a sequel to Res, but it has like this like more J-pop thing. Oh boy. And even has like this live actions, but the gameplay is better. Like the scoring oh, is better cool. than Res. Uh, Iconoclast played that too. I remember talking about. What did but Child kind of, of like Eden Res... come out on? I've never even heard of it. Uh, Xbox 360. Oh. Yeah, it's like really, really unknown game. Cause like I don't really know why. I think it didn't do too well. Is but, it uh, a like, real It's kind of like Res, but the gameplay, yeah, it's it's very much like Res, except it was like made to have tar you know for Kinect, you know the. Yes. The... Yes. Yeah, it was basically made for Kinect, uh, but it's totally playable on controller. But it's basically like Res, but the gameplay is more fleshed out. The music style is different. Like, 
I like the music in Res more because it's more like techno. I, I like that. That's really cool. Now I got to check this out, and it's on the 360 too. So yeah, it might even work on Xenia. I'm not sure. You know, the 360. Yeah, and I do have a I have a modded 360, so getting a hold of these things. Actually, sometimes the more obscure games are actually hard to get a hold of on a modded 360. For instance, with yeah. Instant Brain, I had to just buy that bad boy because there was like no yeah. dump of it anywhere. I mean, you're talking about players. One that comes to mind is this made SM Radius. Yes, yes, I've seen. Yeah, this yeah, channel. he's a, he's like a like a what do you, like yeah they're like basically rail shooter but like a light gun light gun shooters light gun shooter specialist. Yes, I actually went yeah. to record a light gun video for this channel. It was going to be Vampire Night. That's a light gun game I really like a lot. Oh, yeah. But what I wanted to do was get a really cool uh, capture of it. So I had I had like three cameras going. I had the direct capture of the game off the PS2. Then I had a capture of me holding the gun. I can't remember what the third one was. Like a capture of like a like what the TV looked like in, in real time. So you could see me shooting the TV. Anyway, it was this real elaborate setup that took me a day to set up. And then I couldn't get the stupid clear. <laughs> I was like, God damn, damn. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I have a bunch of video of me trying to clear it. But I'll go ahead and one day return and try and get that clear. Yeah. But I guess like back on Sin and Punishment, like definitely the first game feels very schmuppy especially on the higher difficulties there's a lot of yes. like, bullet patterns and the enemy formations are very like thought out you know keep the player engaged like like suddenly there's an enemy over here and then like there's a side scrolling section in the first game yes here. yes I, sudden punishment star successor also kind of has a side scrolling section in one of the stages oh yeah yeah stage three is kind of like a schmupp stage actually yeah yeah and some of the bosses are definitely yeah they're both like very like you know it, I think you talked about this in some previous like uh, videos, but like the you know the Japanese call would would put uh, Sin and Punishment out under the STT category, you know, the shooting game. Right. Like a Japanese players would just, you know, I think they would put like even they sometimes even put Run and Guns, you know. I think in Run there. and Guns also Jason Sonry actually. You know. Yeah, and this was a a topic that this is great we brought it up because this is one of the main topics of today uh, that I wanted to get into was the idea of what do we do with these games as sort of a, a gaming community because I made a video about this where yes stuff like Star Fox stuff like Sin and Punishment you know rail shooters beat em ups mm -hmm. even um, running guns like Metal Slug I would never say they are you know shmups as traditionally yeah. defined and I have a whole video defining what a shmup is traditionally but at the same time they tend to appeal to our player base more than right, right, right. other player bases, and they don't have a home. There's no rail shooter community. There's no running gun community, really, either. And I've and beat em ups. I have a funny story. So I went on Reddit, and I pasted one of my my world record score for turtles in time on beat em ups on Reddit. I was like, okay, if someone's gonna be interested in this, it's beat em ups. Turns out beat em ups on reddit is just some youtuber's channel name and he doesn't uh, even cover beat em ups and so everyone in the reddit was like yelling at me like what are you doing posting on there you're you're, you're trying to invade a space you're not supposed to be posting here I'm like the dude's ch it's called beat em ups i assumed it was a beat em ups thread but um yeah so that just goes to show that when just random youtubers start taking the genre name and <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It shows that there's no yeah, real community behind it. So, yeah, I wonder if Japan in, the, in Japan there's like you know like people call them belt scrollers or whatever. Like, there's probably like some hidden communities or like like yeah. they're not on Reddit, obviously. They're like gonna be like the shmups forum, you know? There's right. Gonna be exactly. Like, there's this there's this place you need to go. Or I mean, sometimes this, there's these people you should talk to, like Iconoclast and some Japanese players who like, you know might be able to talk English, like. Yeah, exactly. I actually remember hearing about this. Um, so GDQ a very long time ago did a Star Fox score run. And I was yeah, like, yeah, this I is the was, coolest. Uh... This is probably the coolest thing. Yeah, Zallard, wasn't it? This is like yeah, the Zallard, cool. Yeah. This is the coolest thing GDQ has ever done up to this point. And um, I remember at the time it was kind of like, we're not supposed to let him do this because it's not a speed run, but we like him. So we'll let him get away with it or whatever it is. But he was talking about how basically he was com competing against these random Japanese scores and they were like super hard to find in just some random yeah, yeah, yeah. forum or thread on the internet, you know? 
and I, I that's how I kind of feel like we are with things like sin and punishment and beat em ups and all that sort of thing where there's no sort of established speedrun.com type a thing for these genres out there and so that's right. why I do really like featuring them here on the channel as well as sort of getting them to a new audience in a way that they're not typically shown right they're not typically shown as games to be played for score or games to be played seriously it's kind of like oh this is a fun little you know game type of thing but not a not nothing too serious yeah i think it's kind of like to me that's kind of like similar to speed runs like or like i don't i used to speed run some games i don't really do that anymore but like it's a game it's a game by game basis like a new game comes out that doesn't mean it's a good speed run you need to check is, does it is it a good game played like yes, that? Yes, yes. It's like, in a shmups, you can kind of be guaranteed. It's like, all right, I need to not die. Like, okay, this is already challenging because I need to not die. But in speedrun, that's not necessarily, it might just be broken. But it might that, be that, good. But yeah, a... it's the same with like a shmup adjacent games, like a rail shooter. Maybe the system is like really boring. Maybe it's not. That's a really great point. Actually, I'm going to make, I'm trying to make a whole video about this because I think it's a very important point that could possibly offend some of the speedrunning people, but whatever, you know, if it offends you, it offends you. But the point that I've been wanting to, to make for a very long time is the comparison between these style of games, the sort of score-based style games yeah. and speedrunning, because a lot of games that are popular speedrunning games aren't necessarily created for the purpose of speedrunning. A great example yeah. of this is, the perfect example of this, which is part of today's video actually, is Star Fox 64. So Star Fox 64 has two methods people play it competitively. One, speed running, the other, the high score running. And I think, I think objectively, even speedrunners can admit that the score play of Star Fox 64 is much, much more interesting and much more engaging than the speed running, which involves hitting booster a bunch. <laughs> you know, and it, that's yeah. Star Fox 64. Just hit booster a bunch, and that's kind of the speed run. Because there's yeah, not a lot mean, of. Like the scoring, yeah, the scoring system is like what the developers basically want you to do. Yes, but exactly. Yeah, like, but then, but to me, like a counterpoint is like some crazy games like Garega, which are like, like, like accidentally amazing. Like you can't say it's like all that stuff is intentional. And I, well, I think it's the same as like if some game is better speedrun, it might just be accidentally amazing, like Super Metroid or something. It's like, yes, well, yeah. somehow this just works amazingly well. In this well, format what's interesting like about it. Super Metroid is Super Metroid is sort of on some level created for speedrunning because it mm. has the in-game timer and at the end it gives you an indication of how fast you went and it uh it rewards you for getting yeah. faster times i think and the thing about grega too i wanted to bring this up i'm i'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this actually is i feel like there's no yeah there's no denying that grega yagawa didn't sit down and envision oh they're gonna be score milking here they're gonna be doing this crazy stuff but i kind of feel like what grega did that was really smart and i think a lot of uh games that are sort of considered accidentally good don't get credit for is i think there was an openness to the game design at the beginning where when they're creating the systems, they leave them open-ended intentionally to yeah. see, okay, what are players going to do with this? I actually don't know. That With the shmup I'm working on now, that's kind of my idea with the scoring system. Is I'm trying to create a lots of open-ended mechanics to where I'm not exactly sure what players will do with these mechanics and what mm -hmm. it will morph into at the end, but I think Grega's really well designed in that they kind of had an idea a kind of vision of what it would turn into and it turned out and it worked seemed to work out right for the most part <laughs> yeah it's pretty crazy the controlled chaos yes exactly <laughs> that's how we create the game. yeah whereas with speed running there are some games that i think you can say are accidental for sure that are still really compelling and fun yeah. uh prob maybe like ocarina of time something like that but at the same yeah. time there's some games that come out that are speedrunning that just aren't interesting. They're just not interesting. You can try and make them interesting. You can try everything you can, but they just aren't. Yeah, I mean, there's always a group of people who like will play something just because it just came out. You know, it's like if some, if a bad if a bad shmup came out, some people will play that. So it's just, I just take that for granted. For for me, that like I haven't run many games, but for me, like the game that comes to mind is that accidentally like really good in that format is uh, I played Nier Automata. And that, that game okay. has a lot of shmup elements actually. Yeah, but yeah, that that game is like a, like it's really like broken. Like the combat is broken, but the movement is really good. And then like you it, you think why would you speed on that? But it's somehow like the levels and everything they flow together as a speed run really well. It's kind of bizarre. Like you know, had out of bounds and all kinds of stuff. But 
I'm gonna have to look into well in that, that format. Because... It's like fully, it's like very accidental that it works like that, but it was the most fun game I had when I was speaking. That I gotta look into that because you will be well. I guess you wouldn't be super surprised, but I get a lot of requests from people to talk about that game because of the shmup elements and also yeah. the comp, the character action elements. You know, two genres I'm hugely passionate about. So it makes sense that I'd cover that game, and I do own it. But when I went to play it, you know, there was the there was the RPG side of the game that I was like, yeah, I I can't you know I can't do the you know sitting around through menus and cutscenes, but. If there's some kind of broken speedrunning tech in there that could get me through the game oh, faster, yeah, 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 sure. I would definitely be interested in actually checking that out and seeing what I could do there, because that that could be a really interesting way to to cover the game on the channel too. Yeah, the game is a pretty weird mix of stuff. Like I, I like like it's a, it's a broken game, but I like like to me that's not necessarily a negative. Like you know, some people might say like, yeah, you can instantly heal yourself, you never die or whatever. But like it's a, it flows well. Like kind of when the combat is broken down, you can like really easily instant kill enemies. But the movement feels smooth. So to me, it reminds me of actually like a PlayStation 2 uh, Shinobi. I don't know if you know about that game. Yes, I do. It's a pretty sick game. I don't oh, know about this. Game. I don't know about the speed tech in it, but I do know that um, when it comes to speedrunning games, actually pretty much any 3D game, even character action games. Speaking of uh, shmup adjacent genres, having really silky smooth fast movement. Or yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. movement that flows in the right way makes all the difference, and I think that's... yeah, it's the same for me. Yeah, that's what that's what I think it make, what makes both those games shmup adjacent is because in shmups you never feel like your movement is restricted. It's the same in those two games. Like that's right. You can immediately dash cancel anything. Like you're always like you you can always get out of trouble. It's kind of like playing a hard shmup, like not like a ultra like difficulty, the hardest difficulty where you absolutely need to route everything. It's more like all right, you can manage yourself through these gaps. You can you can like. Get in the yeah, you can brute force through some stuff that you, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. If you've got the skills and the reflexes, you can do all kinds of wacky stuff. Even in stuff like First Loop Ketsui. Um, yeah. When I first did my first one all of First Loop Ketsui, I was just brute forcing through that game. I didn't have a whole lot of idea of how certain patterns worked. And, the, you know, you have a nice small hitbox and you have lots of toys to play with. So you can just kind of push your way through the game in some degree, in some senses. And I think that's another... We were talking about Euro shmups and the difference between them. That's another point you could build on that. That what makes a really great shmup is if, mm. with enough player skill, you can brute force through certain stuff. I mean, it's not recommended, but it's still possible. Yeah, I, I do think that's like a core thing in all these like uh, shmup adjacent games. That's the core thing in all these. Yes, and that's that like, player skill. I, like, actually, I, I don't think like beat em up personally. I don't think beat em ups are that related. To, like they have their own ancestry, but they, they have that similar thing, right? Like, it's a skill-based arcade game, and you get in a hard situation, you get out. Well, that's interesting you bring that up. Um, so what do you think is the the line between the shmup heritage and the beat-em-up heritage? Because I, I feel like... I could see where it is. Like, beat-em-ups are more related to fighting games than shmups yeah, necessarily. Yeah, and fighting games are all, like, Street Fighter 1. I think beat -em, like, beat-em-ups probably, like, existed before Street Fighter 1. I actually don't know the history much here, but... Like, probably I think not they much before, but yeah. yeah, sort of, sort of around the same time, I think, probably. Are you into dig down some really old stuff, like seventies, eighties stuff? I don't know enough. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah who yeah. knows? But what I was, what I think about the why I consider them shmup adjacent is because once you get the sort of hang on the core mechanics and the movement and all that, you approach them very similarly when you when it comes to routing them, when it comes to sort of finding weaknesses and patterns and all that sort of stuff it looks a little bit different on the surface but as far as kind of the yeah. general approach and feel to it it to me it doesn't feel all that different than playing a, a shmup yeah and i think like when when in either genre when you get like doing score runs or whatever it starts getting close to a, like a racing game you know i don't know how much you play but like, oh i've uh, played a good amount of racing games <laughs> yeah yeah so like you know when you have really especially like a there is shmups yeah, I can think quite a few. Where they're speed kill focused, and you get more waves of enemies like Fire Lancer or mm -hmm. or Zero Ranger White Vanilla or yep. Eskatos. You know, those yes. are like when you play, it just feels like you're like a racing game. You're like, my I need to move over here. I need to move over here. You know, mm -hmm. you gotta hit the up, lines and all that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's quite a similar feeling. I like those. Kind of, I don't know why, but those are like my kind of one of my favorite types of shmups. It's like yeah, stuff I... like Fire Lancer just somehow fits me. I don't know what it is. But... 
I, I love that idea too, where the game accelerate. You can kind of push the game forward in, in a way, at least in a scoring sense, in a way yeah. that a lot of other genres you just can't. Yeah, it's very intuitive. Those kind of like the the attack mechanic symbols them can be complicated, but like the core idea is like, well, just you know, just play faster, play riskier. What do you think about sin and punishment in this regard? A, a star successor. Does it have this sort of feel toward it, or does it feel like? You're you're just locked into the patterns and you just gotta go along for the ride. Yeah, I unfortunately, the scene in Punishment Two is quite a boss milking heavy. Yeah, and the yeah. The rest is pretty straightforward. Though there, there's one, there's the the road stage, the weird stage, you know, where yes, you're on the yeah. bike thing. Uh -huh. That one is like very different. There's like no, there's no milking there. That one's, that's one of the most straightforward. But it's funny you bring this up. Actually, the the main developer Zero Ranger used to play a game for score. He's a he's a secret super player. What's, what game? <laughs> Ibrowski. Uh, it's in the Punishment 2. He played a. Uh... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he, he, he has some score runs on his YouTube. So check him out. <laughs> well, now I gotta check. Yeah, that and out. also Ben Shinobi. Ben Shinobi. I don't know if you know him, but, but a really good French map player. He has like the he has a world record in Radiant Silver Gun uh, store, Saturn mode and a bunch of games. Uh, he has Shinobi itself. I think he has the world record. He has some crazy score runs on uh, Nico video, I think. Oh, well, good old Nico video. Nico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Nico Nico. Yeah, a lot of replays are unfortunately for these games. They're stuck on Nico Nico and it's really hard to find. Oh, yeah. Um, I know it, that you finding stuff on that site is even harder than finding stuff on YouTube. And uh, yeah, I know there's also like a Billy 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 is getting the, oh, the Chinese, Chinese one. Yeah, equivalent. But that one's I have to say that site is like more usable than YouTube sometimes. So, like I can't. Billy Billy Complain. is definitely better than Nico. I'll, I'll say that much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, well, managing, managing the accounts seemed hard, but, like, the navigation <clears> of the <throat> site seemed pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the scoring... I, I think, it, yeah, the first game is more arcadey, you know, the scoring. I, I think that's more... The second game, the scoring is kind of weird. Honestly. So are you doing it's a like lot you, of milking in the first game? Or no? Uh, I don't think so. The first game, there's like I think there's more time bonuses. There's the bonus items. There's bonus enemy ways. Right. The second game is more like you stretch it out. You milk, milk the boss. So I mean, obviously there's like optimization of killing stuff, and some sections you want to go fast. But I think the first game is more close to like a shmup scoring wise. And the second game, it's so long. You should just do individual stages. It's more fun that way. Right. First right. Form. Like just 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 do that. Like. <laughs> yeah. That that's what I was about to say is. Do you think when they were creating Sin and Punishment 1, Treasure put more of an emphasis, at least internally, on the scoring system? And then in 2, because whenever there's lots of boss milking and stuff, that's when I start to wonder, did they really care all that much? You know, when they're making... Yeah. For instance, a great example of this is Turtles in Time on Super Nintendo. So I have the world record score in that game because you can basically infinite boss milk like two different bosses and i was the person who felt up to spending four hours milking the bosses or whatever it was mm. um but yeah i mean if anyone wanted to sit down and milk it for four hours they could catch my score or anything but you could just tell that the scoring system was such an afterthought in the game that they didn't even bother to check to see if you could milk these bosses indefinitely uh you yeah, could probably counter stop it but it might take you a day or something <laughs> Yeah, I think they had different priorities in the second game. I would imagine like slightly different development staff, to be honest. Like, there's a big like there's a big gap between those two games, the Cine Punishments. Yes, yes. And they have the same main director, but I think like the maybe the first game had some crazier developer team. Like, oh, you remember like I think it was a Smup Legends. There was some crazy story about the first Cine Punishment. You know, yeah, I, I think Treasury were they were more <laughs> they were more cr crazy about the scoring stuff back in the nineties. And... Yeah, you know what's a huge um project of mine that would be really cool to do someday is to get more in-depth information about the development of these mm. games like what went into the development what they were thinking like real in-depth stuff i'm hoping to at some point maybe if i can like yeah, interview yeah, some like of the developer. devs yeah interview yeah. them in some way <laughs> hire a translator to join me or something but um i mean for now you could like um they're like develop you know moby games whatever their developer databases and then they're like developer interviews you could like link them together you know yes have yes a treasure fan site or whatever though i think that might already exist it's like so, uh, yeah mr i know mr monkey mad had a treasure fan site i remember following that for ages but i think it's down now that's that's that really cool. for so many years that was up 
like a nice little fan site. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the two Cinepunishment games are quite different. Like, if I want to play them for score, I think I'd, like, go back to the first game. I didn't play it that much, but... Right. And what do you think about the survival gameplay for two? Because I've been... People can see the footage in the background here. I think I could squeak out a, uh, a 1cc no death normal mode run. I probably could do hard mode, but I, I don't know if I want to put... Like, I'm taking your advice. I don't know if I want to put myself through that, but... um. No, no, I don't, like, uh, like it's it's not bad, that bad once seeing hard mode. It might be fun. I, I just Mainly, I just uh, don't play for score. Cause it's like, okay. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. well, my score is bad. Time to do a two, another two-hour run. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, like, yeah, the one, the one thing is the final stage in two is like five times hard well like yeah, way harder ridiculous. than everything else it's so ridiculous. you just want to you just want to do the practice the last stage and then you basically get the game. but like yeah oh yeah i think i did write on my video as well like the, the difficulty curve is better on hard i think i wrote that so like, it is oh, I, i'd say sense. it's worth once you're seeing like because in normal the difficulty spikes are bigger because it's like the last stage is like whoa suddenly the game is hard and the, the highway stage but in, in hard they're like they're like whoa this is already pretty hard and it's yeah a little harder a little harder yeah, but yeah, I do recommend still doing that. It's just, uh, I think it might be a fun thing to like stream and talk to your chat because it's like a, you have some relaxing moments. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. I want to get your, this is a hot take, uh, not a hot take, a more hot topic, but it's something that I've noticed with these types of games that really irks me a lot personally, and I'm going to air my grievances because it's my channel, I can do that. But it, it really bother, bothers me quite a lot when you have like a the Shadow Surge, Shadow Surge, I can't say his name. Shadow Surge oh, style yeah, yeah, videos yeah, yeah. Shadow where they're where you know he cheats them and all that sort of thing you know what I'm not against the idea of tassing them but it just feels the problem that really annoys me is so your run is legit the played you know and his stuff isn't but it you know he doesn't indicate that mm -hmm. and so your runs don't get I feel like they don't get the attention they deserve because the the viewers want to see a legit played run that's why they don't put that in the video descriptions but they're not getting it and you know people always i don't know why people defend this so much but i just you know i i don't know i really it's just i think it's a huge shame especially for these types of games because there's not a lot of info out there um and once you're sort of ahead in the race in the youtube algorithm there's like no there's no catching up really because there isn't enough of a fan base to really bring in the the viewer attention or anything like that well Okay, well, here's my hot take. Like, I know you've talked about this a lot. I, I just don't think the YouTube algorithm is like a line for anything skill based. No, it's not. Like, no, this, it's not just at like all. yeah, if you're trying not to put all. like if you're trying to put like a go runner or whatever, that's just like the algorithm isn't there for you. It's just there for like you know like I don't know some kind of video blog, you know, long like, plays some stuff that long are not. Plays are the huge. thing with score runs is the thing with score runs. They're directly comparable. It's like this player is better. This player is better than the older player. But that's not what the YouTube algorithm is for. It's for like, okay, people like watching this old video. And we'll keep. You know, we'll keep oh yeah, here. and uh, with so. that too, it's it's awful. Um, because not only mm. are they not really um suited for uh score play, like you say, but I feel like they sort of punish you because, for instance, a lot of times now when I'm considering sitting down and making a video, I. I'm like asking myself, how do I smuggle in score play into this video? Like with my zero ranger to all, mm -hmm, I yeah. smuggled it into a review because I was like, people aren't going to watch my to all. They're just not going to watch it. So how do I smuggle this gameplay in there? And so same thing with Sin and Punishment. We're speaking about Sin and Punishment 2, Star Successor. Now I'm thinking now I'm going to have to sort of make this sort of retrospect. Like I have to add in a more editorial side to it because i think it's really fun to do like a two all or a one all clear commentary i think that's really fun but mm -hmm. it's so hard to get people to watch that so and i i think a lot of it is that youtube just doesn't doesn't uh reward it in any sort of way or it yeah desirable yeah, i just think like the players should think more carefully before uh well like they should like unfortunately you, like, you kind of gotta play these games for fun and like if you're gonna put up the videos, like it's kind of a crapshoot whether you get the views or not. Yeah, yeah. But you can have the like in the shmups. Like now we have a you have big Discord and stuff like this. You'll have people like backing up your runs for sure in there, and that's that's a nice thing. Like, that's yeah, a nice thing to have. And that's one and of the big goals the, of this channel. I think when you're talking about the videos, like yeah, I can see how the best idea is to you know combine the things. You know, 
have like a casual viewpoint, scoring viewpoint, whatever. It's kind of like the shooting game. That's why some I like really like some of the shooting game weekly episodes because it's like right, right, exactly. There's yeah. kind of a in some of them there's a really good balance of everything, and then you're watching the world record level replay, and it's like, well, you don't need like this is a, like a perfect video almost, apart from the very hard hardest quarter players. Uh, and I say you bros, uh, and uh, M Night post some really nice links in the chat. I guess like you can add those later. So there's a really nice yes. interview of Sin and Punishment 2, and then there's a, and then there's Mr. Monkey Man's website. Oh, awesome! That's nice. Stuff. And well, I, I'm gonna read through the chat a little more, so like okay. I see some talk about some some games that also come to mind to me. So like okay, yeah, I'll... Pocky and Rocky, Pocky and Rocky on the SNES. Yeah, it's definitely it's not so my game. It's like shmup like yeah. Yeah, is that the one where I, it has I manual that scrolling? But that's getting, does uh, Pocky that's Rocky a have manual yeah. scrolling? Uh, I think it does. Right. I think it does. I, I think I think it. I haven't played it, but I've heard quite a bit, of, quite a bit about I, it. I really need to play it, but I'm definitely gonna play the the new game you know, from Natsume because it's getting a new game like Ninja Warriors got one, so that's like. You know, oh, that's awesome! That's, that's a must. That's a must play thing. You know? Yeah, I need those to guys, do. Those guys know what they're doing. Like, like they're like amazing games. Yeah, you know, I need to do a video on two developers that I really want to cover. One, Natsume. And then the other is Jalico, because these are two developers oh. that I've kind of grown fond of over the years, but no one taught, you know, no one, they don't have a huge amount of brand recognition or anything like that. But whenever I see these games, I'm always, I always kind of think of Jalico as like the sort of like a generic brand Capcom. <laughs> it's kind of like, they're not as good as Capcom, but they're still kind of got some cool, quirky ideas from time to time. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think not to me is a great example of like a you know like a '90s console developer who made like really well designed console games. You know. What yes, I mean? like, exactly. Because usually we, uh, people like Wii U are like, oh, arcade games are better, but then these guys are like, well, here's how you make a good console game with like a good scoring system or yeah, you know, like skill based gameplays. Yeah, and they basically own. And they're the, still going. So. Yeah, they basically did a lot of really cool games over the years that definitely need to be covered. One thing I wanted to talk to you about, since we're on the subject of Sin and Punishment and rail shooters, uh, we'll get to Star Fox 64 next. But before then, yeah. I've always sort of thought that, especially Sin and Punishment 2, is that this is sort of a, a glimpse at what shmups could have become had they maintained a, a more mainstream popularity. Like, this is how the game design could have developed into the 3D space. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Where yeah, rather than just dropping the genre like it's hot fire, I could see kind of like platforming, right? Like platforming went from 2D Mario Bros. to 3D, and it, 3D platform kind of fell off too. But th Mario 64 is a great example of, okay, this is what 3D platforming could have became, basically. And I kind of feel that way about the Star Sin and Punishment series. Like this is what shmups could have become if there was the sort of fan base to back it up and justify the budgets that would be involved. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I feel like, yeah, playing the Sin of Punishment 2, that's like a feeling I get like mm -hmm. from what the developers are trying to convey, like is what you're saying. It's like, they're like, oh, this is the natural progression. This is like the final treasure game kind of. Yeah, like, exactly. They have so much, they have so much stuff from other games and from shoot 'em ups, you know, like it's kind of a homage to all that. Like the last stage especially is like, okay, this is like a shoot up thing. You know? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you have space. like a virtual million freaking enemies. Then you have like a Virtua fighter fight with the dude that's wrapped to your arm. That part was yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, oh, I, that, I that part is the pain in the one CC run. <laughs> oh, I I know. I you. you can just you can just randomly die. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I I could I could definitely tell it when I was working on the the section. I was like, oh jeez. <laughs> I kind of somehow I like that's messed up, but I like that. I mean, that's funny. It's like, oh, you're good at the rail shooter. Well, you're bad at fighting games. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. You can't. You can't manipulate the AI. I think treasure. One thing about treasure games, especially stuff like Sin and Punishment, is they have a real ability to combine genres in a way that I don't think any other dev really has. And I think that's one reason why Ikaruga is such a standout shmup for a lot of people who aren't necessarily into shmups is because it's it integrates stuff from other genres in there that people can kind of connect with a little easier than with uh, the traditional shmups probably yeah maybe uh, personally i feel like your is like really different from everything else and it's like it really stands i don't really enjoy playing it but I, 
Like, I want to <laughs> enjoy that. <laughs> that game is like, that game is like, obviously the skill thing is higher, the presentation is amazing. There's like a lot to optimize, so it's like, it would be a perfect game to enjoy, but I don't. I don't I'm not, one. I'm not a big fan of Yeah, to me it feels like very either, unique, so but... I can see like, a, you know, like, if someone, you know, sees that game to try it, it's like, whoa, this is something different. The chaining is very unique, the polarity systems. Yes, yes, yes. Now, that's what I was getting at with um, stuff like Sin and Punishment, and I think what makes it different than the next game I want to discuss, which is Star Fox 64. I feel like Star Fox 64 is one of the, the best rail shooters that I've played. I'm hesitant because I've played a good amount, but you never know. There could be ones like what you said, Child of Eden, floating around out there I may not have ever heard of. But as far as the ones I have played, I consider Star Fox 64 one of the best. And I don't know what happened with the development of this game because it feels so different than the other stuff Nintendo puts out. Where it feels much more inclined to the arcade idea than what Nintendo typically does. And I think it's a, a real shame that a lot of... Oh, hold on. Let me pull up my Star Fox 64 gameplay for everyone here. So speaking of Star Fox 64, I did a video, and videos, this is a great uh, connection to what we are talking about earlier. I spent like weeks working on this video, and uh, it never quite caught on. So if y'all can, uh, I'll put it in the video description here. But what it was, is it was a two-all of Star Fox, and it's scoring, and it's expert um, meddling every stage. Well, every stage that I play, I have to meddle. Basically, that's the rule. And it was so much fun to do this, do this stuff. I mean... It's one of the most fun games to play for score I've ever played for score. And uh, I don't think people really, you know, the casual people who talk about Star Fox and Star Fox 64, they never really discuss the scoring aspect of the game. They never really discuss the level design, the metal system, or even expert mode. And I think that's a real shame. And it's kind of like with shmups. It even gets shmup syndromed where you'll, I've heard reviewers say, I'm not kidding, that Star Fox 64 is overrated because its story is a ripoff of Star Wars. I didn't even know how to respond to that. This was a conversation I had with someone. I was like, if you're worried about Star Fox 64's story, we're not even on the same planet right now. If that's your concern with the game. Um, but uh, so have you ever played much of Star Fox 64? Have any particular thoughts about it? Uh, unfortunately not. Like when I was a kid or whatever, I didn't have Nintendo consoles. <laughs> Mostly... Uh... Played on emulator later, but I checked out your videos on that stuff, and I definitely yeah, 64 looked really nice, and Zero yeah, I want to try Star Fox Zero as well. Like to me, that's an interesting looking game. Like, yeah, and it's you're you know. talking about Nier Automata. Zero was made by Platinum, and uh, yeah, 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 I, yeah, I yeah, feel like yeah. they had a real, they did a really good job in a lot of areas, and the real shortcomings of the game no one really discusses because everyone just sits down and cries about the the gyro controls. The thing about it is, do you play uh, light gun games at all? Because what I feel uh, like... No, not much. What I feel like it is, I personally loved it, because what I felt like it was is a, a combination between rail shooting and light guns, where mm -hmm. you have to fly your ship and stuff, like in Star Fox 64, but then you have to aim with hand-eye coordination. You can do all these custom shots that you just would not be able to do on controller. And... I actually did the um, a thing where if you mod your Wii U, you can actually force Star Fox Zero to play like Star Fox 64. You can remove the motion controls and play it with a... You can do that. The thing was, is I did that. It was way better with the motion controls and the, and yeah, like the aiming because you could shoot all over the screen. You could make these ridiculous shots that you just can't pull off. Yeah, basically your movement is more independent from you. Like the shooting and movement are like more free for like they're not tied to each other as it's much. It's like right? star it's like star successor. And like yeah. it's uh yeah, you're there it's like sin and punishment where they're not connected. And so you can do all kinds of crazy stuff. The flaw Yeah, because you're like even have like a free movement in three D space, so it's even more than sin and punishment. Like freedom there's more freedom than sin and punishment. Well. Yes, ex exactly. And the thing about it that um that I think is the biggest flaw of Star Fox 64 was, or Star Fox Zero, I mean, was that from what I understand, Nintendo basically forced them to put in these stupid, uh, like, helicopter stages where Shigeru mm. Miyamoto was really obsessed with the idea of having you fly around this stupid helicopter and have a cute little robot come out of it. And so that I feel like the worst parts of Star Fox Zero 
are the parts that Nintendo was part of. And the best parts are, I am assuming, are the parts that Platinum came up with. So, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I really do. Oh, there's a funny, funny parallel here. So, talking about Nier Automata a bit. The, the, the shmup section, like the shmup, actual shmup sections in Nier Automata are actually the worst sections. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny like they're actually like shmup segment they're like they're like you're they're, they're you you know, that's what i was so I w i'm glad i got you on here to talk about this <laughs> because i was watching people have talked about so much about hey cover it talk about the shmup parts i was like all right i'll, I'll check out some gameplay for it at least before i uh write it off i was watching the gameplay for it i was like this shmup, this these shmup sections look kind of look kind of um jank but um yeah. As someone who's played it, okay, give I'll, us the uh, yeah. give us the review here. Okay, I'll so they're like the so there's this cool mech you pilot sometimes it turns into a fighter, it's like a transformable thing. So they're like uh, there are these sections where you're in the fighter form, it's a shmup. Those are I think are the weakest. Though the attack you have some cool like you have a melee attack on your ship and stuff. Like it, attack mechanics are cool, the enemy patterns are bad. Then there's like twin stick sections of the mech, which are pretty similar. There's a cool, cool, a couple of cool sections where you have like free for movement, like kind of like Star Fox. Those are cool, but that's only like a couple times. Uh, I don't get why they did that more, but that's like one of the best sections. But they see, like, it's barely in there. They they made Star Fox Zero. They knew how yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah, so uh, They knew how I, to do I, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do appreciate like talking about Star, Star Fox Zero. I, I appreciate like that kind of experimental game more than like a safe game. You know, like in retrospect, I'm like, oh, they, that game did some cool stuff rather than oh, nobody remembers that game, right? Well, like, you know oh, what's super cool interesting and indicative about that game is Famitsu. People have uh, talked about this, and I think unfairly. They said that... So Famitsu gave Star Fox Zero a crazy high score, like a perfect score, mm. basically. They loved it. It seems like the Japanese side loved it. And then the Western players freaked out and refused to even review it and cried about it and give it bad, gave it bad reviews. Mm. And so it, it, it kind of, to me, it felt like, okay, here is the, one of the clearest examples of the divide between the Japanese gamer mentality and the Western gamer mentality where ja I'm assuming Japanese gamers are much more familiar with arcade mechanics hand-eye coordinate because the funny thing again is on paper these genres don't seem to be all that connected with shmups like if you sat down and said is this at all related to a shmup most people would say absolutely not and yet as far as fan base there is a huge overlap with shmup players like shmup players seem at least from what i've seen seem to really like this genre a lot and not it's not like it, i thought it was really funny that i knew about iconoclast long before i knew he was a shmup player i knew about him because of his ninja gaiden videos and i i remember when i was going to interview him for for the ketsui Destiny release i was like why does this guy's channel look so familiar why do i recognize it then i was like Oh, I watched it for years watching him play character action games. That's where I know this from. And so it's just funny how... Um, you play character action games as well, right, Zerak? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I think I'll talk about the Automata a bit more. Like, I'll sort of pass the channel. Oh, so I think the stream went down a little bit and also lost uh, connection to you. So What? If there's any technical thing. It, it shouldn't. It, I'm getting solid is bars it, is here. It up? All right, all right, nice, nice. Yeah, I'm not getting yeah, any issues over here. I'm watching the, yeah. the feed, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So character action games, yeah, like, uh, damn, when did I, yeah, like I, I played like a Clover game. I played a bunch of games on PS2 that kind of got me into. Like, oh, I yeah. played a beautiful Joe. Mm -hmm. And then later on played God Handle, that's way later. Um, so I know Dan. Oh yeah, Bayonetta also, Bayonetta also one of my favorites. Actually, yeah, that's one of the, I mean, the actual the, the very first time I, I saw a Connor class is um it was Bayonetta. I was the second way. no Vanquish Vanquish. So Vanquish came out I was the second person to beat the hardest mode like on three sixty. Yeah, nice. yeah, I was searching information like the day before that I was like searching who's beating this game? Like this game is crazy hard. And then I saw like a, I think it was Neo Fags or something, and Neo class was posting there. And he was the second or third person to beat the game on PS3. <laughs> Uh, not like, surprising <laughs> yeah like some he had like some he posted a strategy for the last boss mm, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's funny but yeah, i guess like because because we talk about the automata I, I'll, I'll continue my review of the automata go ahead kind of start but at least the shmup section. so so i talk about the shmup yeah the shmup sections are kind of sus with the mech but then there's also these hacking sections with a twin stick shooter and those do get pretty cool later on there's even like a weird stuff in the dlc we have like a 3d plane like uh what's it called What's that housemark game where you're on the planet? 
<laughs> uh, we are on a. I'm remember. trying to think. Chat. Uh, it was help a PS3 out. game. It was a PS3 game. Oh, is it the one where you roll the ball around? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you, I know you're like on a, on a on a sphere. Yes. Stuff. Okay. Oh yeah, super Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's like a, in DLC of Automata, they, they even have that kind of stage. It's interesting because like they're like impossibly difficult there. <laughs> Just funny. So they're like they're like hacking some up stages you're not even supposed to beat, but if you're good enough, you can beat them. So I think that's cool. So this hacking ca hacking stages <laughs> nice. can be quite cool in Automata. But then also like you know the core like the meat and bones, the, you know the core gameplay, the character action part. Also has shmup bullet patterns. And I think some of those are quite well done. Some of those are like whatever. They're like bullet hitter patterns that have no chance of hitting, you know. Like those are kinda meh. But there's some good stuff. Like someone mentioned the opera fight. Yeah, that's definitely one of the favorites. And then uh, yeah, so the is, opera boss fight. That's a classic. Is Nier Automata sure. one a game where you would recommend like the most engaging way to play it is to speedrun it? Whereas, for example, Ninja Gaiden 2, speedrunning it is like a huge reduction because you're just running through the game and you're not really in, in getting involved into the core mechanics all that much. But with uh, Nier Tomta, would you say speed running through it is more more interesting than trying to maximize the combat system and all that sort of thing? Well, I, so I think that's like, that's the positive. Like if you take RBG elements as positive, that's the positive thing. You can play through it quickly. If, like if you're skilled enough, you don't need to level up. You know what I mean? Like, right. That's, at least how I played through that that game again game at first, I'm like, let's just go through it quickly. No, that's just me. So you can do like I think you just do what you want because some people will you know get into the world and the story, whatever. Unlike us, maybe. But like, I I kind yeah. of got into all that <laughs> stuff. But like, you know, you you can play it how you like. This the combat is very free from, so that's nice. But the the game is long though, so like, it's like near it's like Sin and Punishment two levels wrong except for an action RPG. So it's a like very long game. Yeah. So you know, that's kind of a negative. So, and I would say also in that game, the, the DLC, the DLC has like a, you know, in Dragon My Cry, there's the Bloody Palace levels, which are very arcadey, you know, you go floor by floor, hard oh. enemies. There's oh. a stage like Bloody that Palace in the DLC style? of Automata. Yeah, yeah, there's a level like that, and that's, to me, that's by far the best part of the game, and it's very difficult, like, it's like basically meant to be nearly impossible to beat. And I had a really fun time with that. I think okay. I had the first video of that, clearing that. Okay, so... Which is the most, that, yeah, that was... That I would definitely want to check this out so the, you're saying there's a dlc for near automata that's like bloody palace that you get in devil may cry where yeah, you're just yeah, like a, they're like battling arenas crap and, and one of them is like bloody palace yeah see that's so that's what i'm talking stuff. about that's what i'm talking about now yeah. yeah i think it's worth keeping in mind the con the guy who made the combat for automata made the combat for metal gear rising and they're oh, very interesting like, interesting yeah they're very like that's why they're both like the movement is really smooth and like the combat is kind of broken because you know both games is kind of freaking broken you know? <laughs> yeah but it's fun it's fun so to me, they're quite similar. Like that's why I kind of like Automata. Probably I like Rising as well. And you're know, Rising at the you know the DLC with the VR missions. So it's pretty similar, you know, in parallel of the right. Like, yeah, and I gotta get. DLC. I think I'm gonna review those rather than the whole game. It's just get. Let's get to the meat here, because mm -hmm. um... Chain, which I haven't played, but that's also the same combat director that also has some crazy hard like challenge stages or something. Like I heard people really like that game, but I, am, I don't have a so I to play I. I got Switch, I think I got Astral yeah, Chain Switch. and I played it for an hour just the regular main game and it, it got really you know RPG on me so I was like mm. this is as far as I can get get here but if they yeah, yeah maybe the thing I need to I guess it sounds like the meta is to keep an eye out for the DLC and just play the DLC where it's just the combat yeah I think it's so I th I think that's the same case as Automata probably with the with Astral Chain like it's you have like this crazy character action stuff like kind of walled behind an rpg like thing yeah so and they it's can the same the in neo, you know the neo games you could consider yes. those character actions and it's also like all right at first you're kind of playing an rpg you know? but then you realize oh i can kind of like i can play i can beat this stuff just by playing well i don't need to you know, oh yeah neo one my character neo one i just play it like character action like it's yeah, it's yeah, actually yeah. really great for that i've beat neo neo one is like the one dark souls dark souls style game I don't play it like a Dark Souls style game. That's why I did the yeah. air quotes. That I actually have beaten like four times because you can just cruise nice. through it. You can just cruise through it. The boss fights are so freaking good. I I think that game is crazy underrated as far as. Oh yeah, I, I recommend the second game. If you, I, and the second game is even better than the first game. I played through it. it came out. So I played halfway through the second game, and the part that was really grinding my gears about the second game 
and why I didn't end up reviewing it because I was like, uh, I got to think about this more. Was the stupid yokai crap where now you're constantly getting mm. your stamina drained like half the game. What oh. do you think about that? Uh, I, oh, the yokai realm. Yeah, where. Mm, yeah, I don't remember really having trouble with that. I think it, it might be ha have to do with how you play the game. Right, I, exactly. I used the like key flux mechanic a lot. You know what? Like when you switch stances. Yes. Right when you get at the you get your stamina. I, I think it's because I play very heavy on that to recover my stamina constantly. I do that so I think as well. It might be like yeah. So do you but do I, you just I, I, max I, out your key? Is that how you do it? Do you just like no max the crap out of your key and. Go no, no, I, I didn't. I don't really like optimize my like. I think you can do this even at like low level. Like, it, it just yeah, yeah. It's kind of different from the first game because you fight more yokai. But yeah, do you really have a problem with that? Is it maybe like the old boss you're stuck on or something? This a couple I'm like not, annoying. I'm not. I wasn't stuck on any bosses or anything like that. But it just felt the pacing felt slowed down. It felt like Neo mm -hmm. One. You could just cruise through those levels. Yeah, and Neo you're Two. Right. It felt I, I like think you're it's like there to like slow down the player. Yeah, you're yeah, slowing that's probably down. Probably what they're going for. Yeah, you it feels Damn. We we, we don't don't punch you uh to last boss here. Cause I, I never made it beyond the first hour of gameplay in Automata as well. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that happen to a lot of people. For me, I kinda knew what I was going into. And my yeah, my exp I, I kinda keep my expectations low. That's so I get positively surprised and stuff. Oh yeah, is the is the stream alright? Yeah, I, I keep checking all right, all right. it. It's, I can't. Interesting. Uh, I see it fine on my end, so hopefully, at least on the VOD. Oh, yeah, I get, I'll check my. Actually, I'll, I'll just keep your stream open on my end, and if it starts buffering. It could be just server issues with Steam, or with, with YouTube as well. Yeah, like, it could be on YouTube's side. Yeah. Because, uh, at least on my side, it's it's holding together, but who knows? All right, it's looking good. It's looking good for me. All right. Cool. Uh, character action. Yeah, yeah, I do think like, you know, like Vanquish, actually, yeah, it's even Vanquish is a borderliner for a character action as well. It's like, right, it's like a so, yeah, shooter there, character a shooter. action. Yeah, I have that game. I need to I need to play it. Nice, nice. Yeah, I play that a lot. <laughs> okay, so we got you on here. I want to get this out of you. What is your list as far as favorite character actions? Which one do you like the best? Like, you know what I mean? Top 10 or okay. top five or whatever for you. L let me let me dig up my list. Okay, <laughs> while you do that, I'll, I'll go through mine. Number one, I give to Ninja Gaiden. Number two, I give to Devil May Cry. Number three, I'm going to give to Bayonetta. Number four, I'm going to give to Neo in the Neo series. And then number five, probably uh, Metal Gear Rising. That's That's oh. my personal list for the time being. Sounds good. Alright, I guess I'll go through mine, though. I mean, I have Vanquish first simply because I played a lot. Like, I don't think it's the best one. Yeah, yeah I gotta check Vanquish out. I haven't and played then, it yet. Um, and then the next one uh, on my list is God Hunt. Yeah, God Hunt. I like that game a lot. I haven't played it. I need to play it more. Same with the next game, which is Bayonetta. But I really appreciate, like, what I played those games. I really enjoyed. It's fun all overall. And then Ninja Gaiden Black. Yeah, I really like Ninja Gaiden. Like, that's it feels like an arcade geek game as well. Like, you're fighting to survive in those games. Like, you, you're not necessarily styling on the enemies. You're fighting to survive. That's exciting. Black is very and good. Then, um, and then I then I have a Shinobi PS2. I really like that game. Like, I it's not very character actiony, but it's like very arcade, very straightforward. It's like a Sega game. Like, it feels like an early 2000s Sega arcade game. Or something. Um, then I have. Uh, I think that's four games. You can go up to ten if you got ten on on the. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got, I got a lot of games. Okay. Continue. I mean, I have, I have in the, on this bigger list. I have Ninja Warriors. Uh, oh, that's Return a great game. Warriors. But but that's like uh, that's a. I, I don't really count that as character action, but like yeah, I don't count. That's not count that. Uh, Devil May Cry Five. I like Ninja Gaiden Two. Okay, yeah, Ninja Gaiden Two ahead of, ahead of Devil May Cry Five. Maybe Devil May Cry Five is the place too high for me. It's recent. Do you like, do you like four or five more? I haven't played four actually. Oh, yeah, okay. So you should take my uh, <laughs> take me with a grain of salt because I haven't even played four. 
but uh, but I, I see like reasons to enjoy all like three, four, and five for different reasons. I see people still all play play all three. Yes. I mean, five was he has limitations, but now like especially on PC, it has a lot of mods and stuff, and he has like bloody pals, so like there's a lot of stuff. Going on. Oh yeah, I gotta check that side out. The the mods scene for it. But yeah, one again, this is not a character action, but. This list reminded me. So there's this game called Robbie Ribby, which is like a Metroidvania with a lot of shmup elements. That's like really, um, oh, I really, really, really heavy on the shmup elements. Uh, to me, that's one of the games I recommend as like a like a gateway game to shmups. I have kind of like I think I just bought that because someone really wanted nice, me to nice. record it. That's the one where you're the or to review it. It's the one where you're like the rabbit, right? That turns into a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the game is very. I would say it's very good. Like to me, like the the story and the character design stuff are quite cringy. The gameplay is like amazing. It's like kind of like Mega Mega Man Zero or something, except it's very schmuppy. And yeah, I started it's, playing it. Like, it's like really a boss rush. It. It's like a boss rush game. It's kind of like a treasure game. I know like Jimers and Erpo and a bunch of other people really enjoy that. Like, a bunch of schmupp players really enjoy. It. So uh, uh, I can, cool. I have it. I'm gonna I do can, a review uh, of that pretty soon. Yeah, it's, I recommend playing like maybe maybe higher, like not the highest difficulty. I think it might allow hard or something. But like, yeah, it's a pretty long game. But like, yeah, I think I started playing it on hard mode. Yeah, that's that's good. I think I did it too. Yeah, yeah, just play hard mode. It's a challenging. It's a good, good experience. Uh, do I, I don't think I have more. I mean, I have Neo listed, but like, yeah, my character action list not that amazing. Here. Well, there's just uh, not a lot in the genre. That that's it's like the opposite of shmups, where shmups have a a giant yeah, pile of amazing games character action mm -hmm. there's just not a lot of them you know you have a limited selection yeah. for sure so I, I do think like there's some peril like if you're talking about the peril between character action and shmup there's like shmups that have more focus on the weapon system and mm -hmm. those are closer to character action yeah because you know like you have weapons like uh, radiant silver and that's like one of the oldest, oldest ones like well you're obviously switching your weapons all the time you're like Right. Uh, I use this weapon here. Yes. And to me, that's the appeal of Zero Ranger. Like Zero Ranger, Zero Ranger to me, I was about when to say, I played yeah. like twenty third when I played like twenty thirteen or something, I played the older version. Well, what's um, really cool about Zero is, Ranger is like, too? All right, it feels like Raid and Silver gonna accept the pacing is good. And I was like, and the scoring is good. I'm like, alright, alright, mm -hmm. this game is fun. Personally, that that was like my my reason for enjoying. Oh, I love yeah, Zero Ranger. And um, what I think is really cool about it is they figured out how to make the the melee assist weapons work. Like, that's yeah. so impressive to me because that's something I feel like a lot of shmups kind of played with the idea but never quite figured it out. And, uh, yeah, it seems very difficult to make. Yeah, so yeah. I, I want to make a shmup too, and it's like, I'm going to try and go for something like Hellsinker or, I mean, Hellsinker kind of has melee. Yeah, Hellsinker does have melee weapons, but it's kind of like, yeah, it seems hard to implement melee weapons, you know, and then uh, encouraging the player to switch weapons. Like, it's yeah. very, it gets very hard. Yes. Very quickly, like Altonex second. I mean, a lot of games have like bar ga gauges to force you to switch weapons. That's like the common approach. But then Zero Inch is like, oh, there's a scoring system, or like, oh, the melee weapon actually slows down bullets. Yeah. It's... So yeah, yeah, I kind of agree with you because Zero Inch, like, the melee weapons in Zero Inch don't feel like the melee weapons in any other shmup. Like, no, not at all. And then they're, when you go to play like them, develop from scratch. Like, yeah, and then when you go to play them, you're like, this doesn't work. <laughs> when you, like, yeah. uh, I can't remember what shmup it was, but there was some shmup I was playing not so long ago where it had. A sort of melee mechanic to it and i go to swing my sword to slow down the bullet i'm like wait a minute this doesn't actually no that's just zero ranger you know um yeah some games just have high damage i mean that's legit like you might just have a high damage output close range attack yeah but to me that's not like that's that's like the most well, basic the, implementation and it's yeah, not like a problem, character action you think yeah the problem you run into though that zero ranger figured out is it makes the sword just feel very you know very situational whereas in zero ranger because they figured out with the whole bullet slowing down you can like just if you felt like it you could like sword your way through most of the game pretty much yeah and that's what makes no, it i think cool. that's a that's a later like i think at first they didn't even intend that but they they balanced the weapons later so yeah. that the the range options were better i think and i, I remember always appreciated how the swords the... reflect yeah, the sword reflects bullets and the drill is different i, I like how the the weapons are different as well like yeah. Different abilities. I think I remember uh, from the interview, hopefully my memory is correct here, that uh, he was saying that this, the whole idea of the sword slowing down the bullets was sort of an accident when he was designing. And he's like, ah, th I th yeah. this works. <laughs> this is what I want, which is cool. Yeah, I think that's how uh, developing these games kind of works. And that's why having a 10 year development cycle is a benefit. Yeah. And I think that's what you're talking. I, I, haven't, I was watching some of your previous talk, the live 
talk about the Eurasian maps. I think a lot of the cases, the thing is, is they don't have that much development time. They're like, they're like, oh, mate, let's make a shmup. It's easy. Right. Let's make it in six months. Or even like, <laughs> we don't have any previous experience playing or developing shmups. Yeah. Let's just do this. It's easy. I mean, it just doesn't, it's not that easy. So yeah, like, you can clearly easy. see from my treasure games or like Zero Ranger, these, these, the developers clearly played a bunch of games, like from different genres and stuff. They're like, well, this is cool. Let's put this in. Yeah. This is cool. Let's put this in. And it's hard to do that when you don't have that experience. Yes, exactly. Well, awesome. So I think it's time for the hot takes. What do you think, Zorok? Is it hot take time? Yeah, sure, sure. Hot takes. Okay, hey, everyone, hold on. I got something fun here. All right. It's, I got flames in the background. All right, everyone. So I decided to do something a little bit different this time around. Because rather than taking hot takes ahead of time, I thought, wait, wait a minute. That that doesn't make as much sense as having them done in real time. And then the people who do the hot takes can uh, hear what we have to say about it, which I think is more fun. So let's talk about it. Give us your hot takes, chat. Hopefully chat's still around <laughs> after the stream went crazy. Oh, it is a question that could be a hot take. But okay, have go you for played it. The, the Kingdom Hearts 2 gummy ship segment? I haven't played those. Have I have you? not either. I have not oh, touched yeah. Kingdom Hearts 2 in my life. Yeah, they, they look like, a, you know, like kind of Star Foxy, what, what I saw. But like, I don't know how much. I, I think there's, they're pretty fleshed out, what I saw. But fortunately, I haven't played those games. But I mean, yeah, yeah you could consider them shop shops, probably. <laughs> like considering, uh, well, if you consider Star Fox like a borderline shmup, then. Yeah, like a real. Yeah, it's, it's close. 3D shmup, you could say. Yeah, 3D shmup. Yeah. Well, if people don't have one, I'll have to throw out my own hot take while we wait. So, um, I remember this was a hot take that I was going to talk about last week, but uh, didn't quite have time for it. Oh, here we go. We got a hot take here. Arcade games are underrated AF. I'm not sure if that is a hot take. I would agree. I think we all so would agree with that. <laughs> mild, mild take. <laughs> yeah, so I have, I have a hot take. I'm wondering uh, what you think about this one. So my hot take is that um, do, I kind of feel like the Sega Genesis is overrated in terms of its shmup greatness in the pantheon of shmup consoles. I feel like there are a lot of consoles out there that could um, be just as good or better, and yet the Sega Genesis tends to have this reputation as being one of the best shmup consoles. So I, I personally hmm. would... Uh, that, that might be a hot take here. Where I personally would put other consoles over it pretty clearly, such as the PS2, for example, 360. But also uh, Saturn, I would put over the Sega Genesis. And then PS4. At this case, maybe this will be the hot take. What do you think about the PS4's overall greatness shmup console? Because I feel like PS4 is really high up there. As far as yeah, it's one of the top tiers now. It's got... I haven't even I haven't even touched the arcade archive stuff, but I follow the people who play them, and it's like that seems godlike. Like, they even got like world like new world records coming out of the arcade archive stuff. I think that's on Switch and PS4, but you know, it is on PS4. Well, you so. you definitely want to go with the PS4 version though, because the Switch because yeah. they're a little bit laggy. They're a little bit. I ch I checked them. Like Blazing Star is a little bit laggy, but not horrible. I think it's four mm. frames on PS4, so you're getting five frames on the Switch. So yeah, PS4 is the way to go. Plus, I imagine, I would imagine that the higher scoring players are going to be on PS4 rather than on Switch. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So my my so yeah, I never thought much about the Genesis library either, but that's because I'm not that old. Like I, I didn't, I, I had a Genesis as a kid, but like I had a very limited library of games. I know, like Thunder Force. Yeah, it's got some. Popular, it's got. I, some I wouldn't think of Genesis titles, as a but... shmup console, personally. Yeah, like among retro collectors, maybe. But I mean, you got PC Engine, you got Dreamcast, like you got a bunch of companies. Saturn. I mean, even Saturn. Yeah, for me, like I would just think, oh, yeah, Saturn, Dreamcast, they have more shmups. Like, PS2. Dream... People forget PS2, PS2, yeah. PS2's got kind of a crazy lineup of shmups too. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't think PS3 is can be thought of a shmup console. Even that. No, there's, you, I mean, definitely not more limited. than. Canada. You're very limited on the PS3. But the PS4, that thing is insane. I think it's a, an example of a good shmup console. When people... I get a lot of people messaging me. They're like, okay, I finally caved and bought a PS4 just for the shmups. I think if a console... If you will buy the console 
strictly for the shmup, that's a real good sign that it's a very good shmup console. Yeah, PS4? Yeah, I think you'd say that for the PS4. I remember Jamers didn't have a PS4 for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> He's saying, I think he, got I think it he like won a PS4 or... game at one of the Stunfests and didn't have a PS4 to play it on. I think he got it for to play S Parade. Yes, yes. He finally yeah, caved. That's what I'm saying. When you finally cave and get the console, I think that shows it's a yeah. really good shmup console. I mean, for me, like, I basically got a 360 because I, yeah, so he caught, like, I was like, I was 18 at this point. I was pretty young. I was into shmups, I wasn't like a hardcore player at that point. But like I saw like Ikaruga got to port 360. And at that point people didn't know like which console, like were, were the shmups gonna be on PS3 or 360? But then a bunch of shmups just started coming out of the 360, so I got a 360. So we got- And I ended up just, I, I just had a 360 for like shmups and a virtual on and yes. fighting games. And, yes, exactly. Know. So we got a really like, good actually, hot take here. Um, here's the hot take. Um, DMC4 combat can't save the bad enemy design, level design, and pacing. So, I would uh, agree with that, actually. <laughs> um, the thing, the funny thing about it is, I think that the DMC series as a whole, not just DMC4, kind of has meh level design. Because the level design in a lot of DMC games is basically, run to area, fight enemies. Run to area, fight enemies. Run to area, fight enemies. There's no sort of like, like you, it feels like you're just going from zone to zone. There's no sort of interconnection mm -hmm. between the level and the enemies. Whereas in Ninja Gaiden 2, for example, like the levels and the enemies, the, the enemies just show up in parts of the levels. And so they have a much more interactive experience. Like the stairway is a yeah. famous example of this, where you're locked into the stairway and you have hundreds of enemies swarming you. But the fact that your back's against the wall and you just don't have a lot of room to move around is part of how the game works or there's other parts in ninja gaiden where you're fighting them on these kind of weird platforms and you're like and it like restricts your combat because you can't fall off the platform or that sort of thing so i think ninja gaiden 2 does a much better job of this than dmc so i agree 100 percent and i feel yeah, like what i mean i feel like with dmc 4 especially the the kind of better way to play the game is bloody palace anyway rather than running through the campaign so Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's similar to what I think about Neuro Automata before, basically the same comments. And I, I agree, like, even, so I played Vanquish a lot, but I think, like, the weak point, like, the, that game kind of has a similar thing where, like, the mechanics are amazing, but the level design doesn't fully exploit it. Yeah. So, like, I, yeah, and then Ninja Gaiden is obviously, like, the level design is really tight most of the time and really challenging. I like that. So, like, yeah, yeah I can see, like, overall as a game you play through, Ninja Gaiden better, because it's just, you know, you can't go wrong. Like you can't play it wrong. <laughs> DMC4, right. you can probably like you know play it wrong, and then you're like, what is this level design? You know, yeah, what is exactly. level design? I'm not gonna play Bloody Palace. Yeah, exactly. But then like as an experimental combat game, like whatever the hell that is, then yeah, yeah it's like. So, so that was a great hot take. Yeah. Okay, let let's yeah. see another one here. Uh, I saw someone says Vanquish Melee sucks. Yeah. Like, I yeah, can't comment. Kinda. I haven't played. I haven't yeah, played. I, I, I can comment. I mean, yeah. So so the way that worked, so they meant to have melee and shooting like, it's meant to be like a melee shooting game hybrid like your yeah, character action with third person shooter but they they ended up at the end nerfing melee it was too strong and they want to focus on third person shooters so the melee is kind of bad it's like punishing to use right but i think it's right. strong i think it's cool it's like it's like interesting the the melee is very situational i think that's kind of cool but it's not that strong but I, so that reminds me with what i was possibly surprised with Neuro Automata is, I think it's a better fusion of of uh, shooting and character action in that game because you have like the shooting as well with the pod. You're like kind of playing a third person shooter. And right, kind of yeah. Like uh, Sin and Punishment actually when you're shooting. There's, there's sections where you're just walking around shooting like a third person shooter. And I think because the fluid movement and stuff, it's a nice fusion that. So I think like for shooting melee fusion, I, I think Automata is better. But like you'd argue as a game, it's worse. So DIY mentioned this. This. This is a hot take in general, but I don't think uh, it's probably not a hot take on my channel because I agree 100% that uh, the majority of game reviews and critics are extremely lacking on a fundamental level. I absolutely agree with that 100%. And I think the thing that is lacking is the discussion of the interaction between the player and the game. It's <laughs> That sounds obvious, but it seems it's crazy how little of that you actually get in reviews. Like, if you want to learn, okay. For example, here's a great example. DMC5 comes out. How is the combat of that game compared to DMC4? You know 
how many reviews are going to tell you that in a, in a convincing fashion that, oh, the DMC4 combat system has this, but the DMC5 combat system has this. Same thing with Neo 2. Neo 2 comes out. I'm the one, I feel like, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this sort of yokai realm or the, the constant counters. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Let's see what other reviewers say have to say. And you know, it's hardly ever, these types of things are hardly ever talked about. Like the, the nitty gritty aspects of the gameplay in most reviews is just not discussed. So you have to take to the streets basically to get that info. So I, I agree yeah. 100% there. Yeah, I kind of agree though. Like if you're looking for analysis, like there's, like there's so much content nowadays. Like there, there are more and more, you know, analysis, critique stuff. You can find the good stuff. You need to look hard, but just that's just how the game is. Like, yeah, but I even it's kind of like, like there's there are a lot of games out there, and there's not that many good ones. Well, there aren't a lot of good ones, but you know, that means it's the same for you know, videos, reviews. You gotta find the right people, you know. Well, it's also Maybe like, like I, another great well, one of this that always kind of bothers me is a uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. So I am a fan of Metal Gear Solid mm -hmm. Five. There are issues with that game, without a doubt. But when it oh, yeah, came out, <laughs> when it came out, I mean, it just got tens across the board and you're like, OK, this is the best in the series. This must be better than three. This must be better than everything else. Right. And there's just so much of that game that they did right. And so much of the game that they. Is Rocky there? All right, right. I think I can hear you again. Yeah. Your sorry. Connection break. Yeah. Sorry. My my uh thing dropped. I don't know what's what's going on, uh, you know, sucks. but All right, yeah. we're, we're almost through it here. So the next one was, what do you think about the hot take as far as what is the best controller method is, um, you're a keyboard player, aren't you? No, 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 <laughs> I, I play on stick. Oh, and then I, play, I, uh, I don't know why I thought I, you were a keyboard player. No, no, no. I got a stick in like 2011 or something. Maybe it I was think the first. Yeah, the first game I practiced with stick was a uh, Radiant Silver Gun and Akai Katana. Remember that? Video. Maybe it was and your was Zero Ranger stick. video. I feel like I saw a key display on your Zero Ranger video, so I assumed you were playing on keyboard. Oh yeah, this because I, I had like my input display as the X batter. Like my my input ah, display was X batter, the key mapper. The deception. I, I, don't use that. <laughs> I see. Right. Uh, so yeah, I controller. I say stick. But yeah. what do you so say? I, I pretty much I, I saw your previous like video on this, and I agree like stick like it doesn't really matter, but stick makes you uh, lose less stamina, yes, it's less draining, yes, and that's like pretty much it. Apart from that, like you just use just don't use something that breaks. Actually, I, I used to like play on pad a lot, and I still like my favorite game virtual. I played that on pad, so like yeah, there are games I played on pad. But, Some like, games stick, you have to. Like, I actually uh... got a stick because I, I kept trying to I, I kept trying to buy third party third party. 360 pads and they all broke like in some random yes. way and I, I just got sick of it then i just got a stick for a hundred dollars and it's like still working for 10 years later like well that's a that's oh, 10 yes. 10 dollars durability a year. <laughs> durability <laughs> like, there's right. no comparison sticks are by far the most durable yeah so i, I think it's, there's a misconception of sticks costing a lot of money because they last a long time it offsets that if you just like if you can afford well, also, too, I mean, there's a giant backlog of used sticks you can buy now, too. Like, you can yeah, get yeah. a PS3 stick that's really good, like a Hori PS3 stick for, like, 70 bucks. And then yeah, just then you can switch the parts when you don't want like yeah. yeah. So it's, it's in a lot of ways, it's more convenient to pad. But, like, but in general, I would say use whatever. Like, How I, do you I, to me, it kind of bugs when I'm playing a fighting game or something, and people are like, ah, oh, this control is better. In that case, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> like... You can use whatever. You can still beat anyone, you know, with a pad. Like, yeah. Don't worry about it. But like, if I'm gonna say like, what's the best like use like uh, comfortable, then maybe stick. Yeah. But it does depend. It depends on what you're playing. So there are actually like games with so many buttons you need to press. I think pad is like arguably better. That's it's what I was gonna ask you next. How do you play games like Bayonetta and Nier Automata? Do you play those on pad? Yeah, yeah, pad. Yeah. Yeah, because those kind of games I wouldn't wanna like. Like, there are games you could theoretically play on stick, but, like, when you reach eight buttons, you know? Like, when you have to push eight buttons all the time on the stick, I think it's too much for the stick. Yeah. And at that point, like, pad is, like... Virtual line is one of those. Like, there you are, it's actually eight buttons. Yeah. And, you know, like, Armored Core or something. Like, a bunch of, like, random games, like, uh, kind of action -y games. They might just have so many buttons that it gets awkward. That's what I was going to say, because I was looking into maybe playing, like, 
on keyboard or something and I feel like even keyboard for those types of games because of how much left right hand hand you know and buttons you need to press all the time like you need to be like a keyboard wizard to pull that off effectively yeah. so I, I play character action on pad still so you know depending on the genre I guess could be an answer too mm. stick for I think 2D stuff for sure and then pad for 3D stuff for the most part okay I'll see more, more hot takes I guess Yes. Well, like, this is a related one, but we'll go through the older ones. But this is a very related hot take. Hitbox and keyboard are better than stick. Yeah, I can see that for fighting games. I, I can see that theoretically being true. Yeah. Because I you can see. do all kinds of uh, all kinds of naughty stuff. With yeah, like, I can't argue that stick is better than hitbox. I just can't make that argument. So I just have to agree. <laughs> like, it is like you're just triggering those four inputs by a button rather than the lever. Like, you know, sounds good to me. I think it depends on the game, honestly. I think it does. I think some games. Um, there's no difference at all as far as stick or hitbox, but uh, certain games, if it has lots of like charging and like very specific downs and uh, very specific kind of dial in inputs and stuff, I could see hitbox being better, but yeah. I don't think it makes too much of a difference overall. Maybe Tekken or something, you know. With electrics and Korean back. The nice thing about the box probably like works with like literally anything. Like once you once you master that controller you can like you can like play any game like that. That's yeah. Awesome. I wonder. <laughs> yeah. Um let's see here. Any other hot takes? Mm -hmm. Shmup fans should be playing talking about Downwell more. Hmm. Maybe I should. I I haven't played Downwell. Oh yeah I played Downwell it's it's a fun game. Is it is it shmup like in any way? Yeah, it's definitely shmup. It's like a shmup where you're constantly falling, and you shoot downwards and like reduce your falling speed. It's very it's a rogue like shmup thing. Related to that, I think Monolith is great. That's another gateway shmup kind of thing. You probably know about that game. It's kind of like vaguely related to Zero Ranger. It's like a rogue like shoot 'em up. It's a very good time. That and Gunwell kind of. Yeah, and for people, um, the, I see the D-pad, the D-pad players um, in the chat. Yeah, I have a whole video yeah, about yeah. this, um, about which one's better, and I have a more nuanced take. But this is the hot take section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we give the hot take. <laughs> Let me see. There was some interesting take. It was a uh, yeah. Kids these days say the live continuous system is bad design. That's yeah. You could say yeah. That, that's the hot take. Live live continuous system is bad design. Yeah, yeah. People do what say do that. Think? Like they they what don't do like um. Let's say let's say you screw up in a character action game a bunch of times and you have to restart from checkpoint. Yeah, what do you, you think? Know, some people. I don't think it's bad design. It's a type of design. It's punishing design. You, know, you punish the player for screwing up. I, I don't think it's bad, but I don't think it's I guess bad it at should all. be communicated. It should be like communicated to the player that this this kind of game. Because the case where people don't like that is they just don't know what they're getting into. They're like they want it to be a cakewalk or something. But yeah, it's I... challenging. I like live systems for a number of reasons. Um, one of them being that, uh, yeah, it sort of, t it sort of um, teaches this idea of mastery-based gameplay, where you can't basically spam yeah. your way through the game because if you try, the game will uh, punish you. I, yeah, I, I think one of the most like clear. That. To me, it's also like bomb stock, you know, like shmups. A lot of games yes. have equivalent of bomb stock. Right? To me, it comes to my mind. PS2 Shinobi have like Ninja Nimpo, like certain immersive magic. Same Ninja Gaiden. Yeah, you have the magic. You know the Nimpo. It's super strong. It gets you out of trouble. You need to manage that well. If you enter the boss fight knowing Nimpo, then well, you know. I think it up. would be hilarious actually, um, if instead of taking the route they do with removing live systems where it, it checkpoints you, if it if you died in the game, made you restart. <laughs> that would be pretty hilarious. It would be brutal, but I I don't know. I think it'd be kind of funny if someone yeah, it's in funny a modern that's game kind of did appealing, that. But people like find that appealing in a roguelike game, you know, like Binding of Right? Rise, yeah, I guess a roguelike. Like it's popular, but it needs to be like standardized in this mold that is a rogue roguelike. Here, you die, you restart. But then like another game. Well, you cool, could man. almost say <laughs> though that having a a really generous checkpoint system is sort of um. I don't know. It's sort of get letting the dev off easy because you can basically mm. make absolute crap sections and just, oh, well, I'll just let the player spam their way through. 
where if you had a system where if you died too many times you had to restart the level the dev would have to make sure that that level is really tightly paced really tightly put together otherwise the game's going to be ridiculous so yeah, you can yeah, also I, see it I, from I, that way too where a game that's good restarting the level isn't as punishing of a slog because it's a better designed level you get through it faster and your skill's going to carry you further faster maybe yeah, I mean that's like, like you know that's arcade game that's arcade game design in a way because a lot of you're always like you know generally the players starting the game from the start you know yes they get on the cabinet they go through the game the whole game needs to be good and solid and I guess the filler. perfect case study of this is Ninja Gaiden on the NES so in that game yeah. I definitely would not remove the life system I would not do that mm -hmm. I would leave it in there because just being able to because you have like a checkpoint system in that game with your lives but if you die you have to restart the stage I think that's good because then you have to relearn the stage but you'll notice when you get better at the game that you have a lot less difficulty getting from checkpoint to checkpoint because you've learned the flow of the gameplay you've learned how to clear the state the the stages more quickly and effectively so it's not as punishing as you'd think but yeah i i so yeah they might yeah, i think it's positive like positive mechanic because it adds a lot of tension to the player it's like mm -hmm. whoa what's next i have zero lives yes exactly that tension if you don't have the tension is gone I mean, you could do that, but if the if the developer wants to add tension, then you know, add it. If the players don't like tension, then that's like, hmm, maybe they don't like this like kind of game. Maybe they don't, don't not like Ninja Gaiden if they just want to, you know, randomly get through it. So yeah, yeah, I disagree that you know it's a bad mechanic. It's a bad design. It's a bad matter of taste. And like, mm -hmm. kind of game oh, here's a here's a hot take. Um, one of the I can't pronounce his name unfortunately. Uh, he likes GTA San Andreas. Um, I kind of have a funny opinion on GTA San Andreas. I feel like San Andreas was the beginning of the end, so I don't have super fond feelings about that game. I don't think it's a bad game or anything, but I feel like San Andreas was the point where developers thought bigger equals better. Bitter, bigger equals better. Make it bigger, because San Andreas is like a huge jump from Vice City as far as like map size. And I think the message of San Andreas was add more RPG mechanics, make the open world just big, keep making it bigger, make it bigger, add more, make it bigger. So I feel like that's why I think uh, San Andreas is a little bit of like the beginning of the end as far as the style of game design that I like. So uh, I think I played San Andreas a bit, but I, I never got super into the GTA games. So. To like the quintessential open world game, but yes, I liked Vice. I City play them. I play them, but I don't remember anything about it. <laughs> Carjacking <laughs> people, basically. <laughs> okay, last hot take. For the best. We're gonna give it one minute. The person who comes up with the best hot take in the next minute will discuss it last, and then uh, we'll end the stream. So come on, chat. Show us your hot takes. Top down GTA best for the game. I didn't ever play those. I, they might be oh, yeah, the oldest ones. I barely remember. I, I could see that. Yeah, I can't say much. But we're still waiting for could the be. the hot take. Yes. Someone bring the spice. The Damn. Shmup. Okay, here we go. Nemo's got That's it. That's a hot take. Nemo's got it. Shmups need to innovate more. What do you think, Zerok? Uh, yeah, in general, yeah, but you don't need cave. You, know, you don't need cave to make the innovative shmup. You may have like different teams doing different things. But yeah, I agree. You know, that's so like that's why I played a lot of Dojin shmups over the years. I like seeing what kind of crazy stuff the developers come with because it could be like literally anything. It's like it's like the same experience as when I first dug through arcade games on emulator. What it was like, whoa, what's in here? What kind of games exist? It's like Dojin's like, no, they're new games, so nobody even knows. I yeah. might come out I might come out on the other side of this. I see, when you say innovate, this is an interesting question because you could talk about two different things, right? You could say innovate as far as like Ikaruga style where we add more like unique game mechanics where people like mm -hmm. that bring in new people to the genre, like, oh, this is such an interesting game mechanic. I personally don't want shmups to innovate all that much instead what i'd like to see shmups do is um become more refined that that was the Damn. direction i would want to see the genre go where Damn. just uh 
do shmup, but do it more. <laughs> that's what I Damn, like. damn I'm, I'm your enemy now, Mark. Yeah. I'm on the opposite side. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with the with the Charlene. Yeah, more a character. Yeah, so uh, I like... um. What's, what's that game? What, what's the game Bog Hog is working on? Mechanical Star Mechanical Astro. Star Astro. Yeah, that game is on the side where they have more like mechanical yeah, definitely. elements, but they also have the caves. They kind of have like everything. Like I guess that's like the ideal kind of thing. Well, but, I like, think I, I'm not I like against I really the... like experimental games, even if they like kind of they're not perfect. I'm not against the idea. My, my counter take to your take is like if 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 people make really polished shmups, how do they tell them apart from the classics that are like ten years older? If it's like mechanically similar. I mean, well, what old, I you know, what I'm talking about the same, huh? is gameplay. I think shmups can innovate in a lot of areas that could definitely use innovation. But as far as core gameplay, I feel like shmups, for the most part, are one of the few genres that have gotten that shit right. They've they've held it together mm -hmm. in a way that a lot of genres have fallen apart. My idea of innovation would be shmups need to figure something out with the presentation. They need to figure that shit out. They need to move into a higher fidelity, a more interesting presentation space. Um, yeah. But as far as the core mechanics, I'm not against people like doing, you know, character action elements and shmups or anything like that. But as far as like the overall genre, what what the genre needs to do as a whole, I wouldn't want to say, okay, everyone, add in various RPG mechanics and all these different mechanics into your shmups. That's going to be the answer. My answer would be, no, no, okay, do your shmupness, keep it shmuppy, but let's work on the presentation here. Let's up the fidelity. Let's make this these games look better <laughs> let's look yeah, let's, let's get prettier let's let's I agree, get but cuter. the problem <laughs> yeah i agree but my, my problem here is like i think it, some ups look really good in the dreamcast already like border down under defeat those are already like presentation wise like they're not the, like the newest games but our game scales so, when we're like... comparing them to other shmups but think of stuff mm. like the arc system games coming out like the new guilty gears i mean this yeah. this stuff is nutballs crazy presentation wise now I don't yeah, think shmups right. can do that right now because the but you know it's just not there. But I'm saying, I think that would be a great direction to work towards is keep that cave you know or like for instance if cave came out with a new shmup, what I would love to see them do is you know make a Futari type of game or whatever. Keep keep that core gameplay there, but just make the graphics insane. That I I would yeah. love yeah, to I see, see that. Though what my point was like in the Dreamcast era that shmups were like they were not behind. Like yeah, because they're on not, arcade. It was not, they were it was made not on arcade behind. machines. <laughs> That's why. You know, yeah. It was not behind on the curve then. So, like, how is being ahead of the curve now going to change things? I just think we need to Maybe. get on the curve. We're not even ahead. Yeah, yeah, I just I need to get yeah. on it. We're like, yeah, I agree. Way like, presentation behind. better. Yeah. Presentation better. And then someone else said in the chat, yeah, better practice modes and like, or like teaching the player. I think a really good example teaching the player is Natsuki Chronicles, which came out. Yeah. He has like the story mode and like, the story mode is sneaky because you're like, oh, this is some weird, you know, it's not our arcade mode. What is this? But it teaches you all the levels, and like you play through that, suddenly you can once you see all the arcade modes because it was such a good practice mode. You didn't notice. Another I thing that's kind of got. I might make a topic video about this, but I also wonder maybe if shmups we need to change our sort of tone and change our attitude a little bit, and be a little bit more confrontational with the players because I think that might be part of the success of something like Dark Souls, was the game was like no screw you you suck and it had this sort of like smack you in the face sort of like bravado to it and i almost wonder if shmups should maybe start start taking that to heart a little bit more where maybe instead of being not like elitist but having a little bit more swagger a little bit more style a little bit more like yeah you know you're cool if you can play this game you're cool yeah i guess like I, I, i'm gonna come back to ikaru i don't even enjoy that game that much but i think that's a game where it's like very straightforward oh you're bad you, you're just not even shooting at enemies <laughs> oh you got a c rank bro it's like oh and you Ikaruga ran into a wall popular. you ran into a wall game over <laughs> you know like is, that game is actually kind of brutal like that's part of to me it's surprising it's popular because i think ikaru has like brutally difficult to me like oh diy I, like, mentioned oh, like hard. theming that's very good i think that's yeah. very good i think shmup should See, when I say innovation, these are the types of things I'm thinking of. Like, Shmup should look into, like, Fu Mushi, for example, is a great series because it has this very distinctive theme of the, the bugs and mm. the forest, and it's so iconic. Same thing with Death Smiles. Like, I think Cave was very good at that, making these sort of themes that you kind of connect with. Mm. 
Whereas a lot of shmups that come out that could be really good, they just have, you know, a sort of generic shmup theme, and uh, people want yeah. something new and interesting. Yeah, I guess. I could be yeah, down for that. I'd argue Taito and, you know, Taito and Rising had pretty charming stuff too. I mean, oh, for sure. But yeah, nowadays, nowadays it seems harder, yeah. It's hard to stand out. Like, for example, oh, yeah, like Super High Dora, what you example, meant to Like, news. Super High Dora is a cool game, but yeah. it's just like our type theme, you know, that stuff like that, mm -hmm. where it's like, hmm, maybe we should have made a little bit, could have gotten a little bit more creative with the theming here. Yeah. Yeah, I think Charlie needs to nowadays, you, to sell a game, you need, like, characters. And it shmups a lot of time. That's, like, this anime is... characters, you know. You don't even just need anime so... characters, because here's the thing, um, as a YouTuber, making thumbnails for this genre is a pain in the ass, because there's no freaking characters to put on the thumbnails. Like, people just, just... want characters yeah. on their thumbnails. That's, that's yeah, just you the just fact. Need to f you just need to follow Jimer's school, where he looks through his video and takes the frame with the highest amount of bullets. <laughs> that's 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 what he actually does that well is i don't i don't ultimate. disagree but there's some <laughs> no. games where i like uh like what i've done like for mars matrix for example there's no character for mars matrix so i put lin min May in there because i'm like it, it kind of fits like you have to get creative here i feel like shmups like i can't tell you how many times i've used rico because she's like one of the actual shmup characters that you can use so um mm -hmm. cave does a better job about this than other developers so yeah talking about present day i do think uh Ar arcade blue type R, the arcade version is you know that's a modern shmup like example of a modern shmup pretty yeah. successful in that yeah i don't i don't know like I'll... it's not the high the 3d isn't the highest quality but i think it's good enough for now this yeah i'm trying to think what would be a modern shmup now that came out you know what i mean yeah so i i do think some games have aged very well over the years but Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, what else? What I mean, uh, Asterbreed. Yeah, version you know, Asterbreed. When Asterbreed came out, that was like top of the line. The graphics, you know, everything in Asterbreed were. It was definitely like a standout thing. It was like very small dev team. Right? It looks really nice. So. I think when Crimson Clover came out back in 2010, the graphics were great. Yeah. You know, but oh, that's 10 personally, years ago. I, I don't personally. I don't like the graphics in Hot Take. I don't like the graphical style of Crimson Clover. I so, hear that a lot. It's hard for me to connect with that because I, I love the, I love that sort of graphical presentation. Well, let's just throw shit on the screen. Let's make stuff explode. Yeah. Let's make your eyes, like, dance and smile. Like I like. I've heard people say that they want more minimalistic, sort of, um, serene. I guess presentation yeah, yeah, yeah. shmups. I'm not. Sometimes. I'm not about that. <laughs> I, damn, I love damn. the idea of stuff blowing up and explosions and lasers and stars. I love that kind of stuff. Damn, I'm your enemy once again. <laughs> you, so you don't like the CC, the Crimson Clover style of a Well, yeah, yeah, it's like, to me, it seems it gets hard to see stuff. But uh, you can blame me for playing the yellow shit when the, the stars are yellow. My hitbox <laughs> indicator is yellow. Come on, you got to play Type-Z. I mean, can I even yeah. respect you? Uh, dude, that, type -Z. That, ship is too, that ship is too strong. I can't play <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> It's one of my favorite sh ships and shmups because it's like, it's going to be fast and have a wide shot. It's just going to do it all. <laughs> but I, I think one thing underlooked, like you talk about, we're talking about presentation like, in terms of like graphical fidelity, but a lot of shmups have very good like chore choreography in, in oh, like yeah. animations. Yes, absolutely. Like border down, you know, the Altenex second. Shmups uh, have Ring 27. They have like, they that have like, shmup brought, I like, just covered. Yeah. Fantastic animation and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, G. Darius PS1 game, but it has some crazy, you know. I love G. Dar Darius, yeah. Yeah, that really good, cool idea. Like, to me, that's even more... Like, the art to direction is more important than the... The... Find this mechanical detail. Oh, yeah, that reminds me, so, like... I think um, finding that... Yeah, house, yeah, it reminds me of, you know, Housemark games? They made, like, a Next Machina and mm -hmm. other twin stick shooter. Yeah, we talked about Stardust earlier. Those are like those. Those dev team has a priority on the graphics, is one of their strong points. And I, I do think it's interesting to look at those games from that lens because they are fairly popular and they have fancy graphics. But mechanically, some of the older ones are more like on the Euro side. I'm yes, pretty excited to see Return. The, the, the next game is Returnal and has a lot of shmup elements. And I know actually some of the developers like Sin Punishment 2, for example, and some other games. So like, I'm excited to see that game. That's, that, that's going to be like a very shmup heavy game. So. That's the divide I want us to cross, is I don't want it to be 
if you have really great presentation, you're on the more Euro shmuppy. And then if you have really great gameplay, you're a little bit more um, scaled mm, back graphically. I think if we could find that find that blend there, that could be really good for the genre. That's why I'm, yeah, it's, I'm it's curious weird, to see you what think happens. It's just a matter of getting the right people together, but somehow they they're often on the opposite sides. Like yeah, exactly. People talking about Cinemora. People are talking about Cinemora. Yeah, they're on the opposite side. They, yeah, exactly. That's they, not the answer. <laughs> no. You got to get both of them together. Well, awesome. I think that will do it for today's episode. Uh, thanks so much for joining, Zorak. It was really great having you on the having you on the show. All right, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's fun. Any final thoughts before we head out? Uh, mm, let me think. <laughs> Not really. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll talk about Virtual on a bit because that's my favorite game. So uh, okay, go ahead. So so like that's like a arena one-on-one -on -one game uh, like a mech fighting game but it has very to me it has very like heavy shmup elements because the movement is smooth like we talk about your automata as such the movement is like very fast and there's like no even though it's like a fighting game kind of thing they're barely in your recovery and your attacks and it turns into like this 3d shooting game that to me was always interesting i got 3d it's like a mix of character action shmup and fighting and yeah, it's been can you play it competitively Online and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I played it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I played competitively. Basically. What's the? Yeah, I played for like ten that? years. Uh, it's on PS4. It's on 360, Xbox One. It's on like everything, apart from PC. Ah, uh, that's what I was about to say. Is there a PC version? Uh, it'll be on. I think eventually it'll be emulated on Xenia. Well, that'll be the way to go. But not. It's not that good yet on Xenia. So, uh, how is it hard to find matches in that game? It is definitely hard to find matches nowadays but uh, but there are discords and stuff so people will make it as easy as possible but it's funny to me they're definitely in that game there's crossover between shmups because actually the main character i play basically has like homing lasers one of the main attacks and those the other attack is in, in japanese they call it force because of ray force oh nice so <laughs> the canon term for homing lasers in virtual on is force all, all homing lasers are called force pretty god luck that's you know, really cool like that. and Maybe... my favorite matchup is like there's like this puppet character, he's kind of like Eddie or whatever from Guilty Gear, except he has like four puppets and they shoot like a crazy amount of different bullet patterns, like a bullet hell game. And then I'm playing that like mech that's like a Ray Force ship. So I'm like fighting a schmuck boss. So it's fun. It's fun. You know what would be fun is maybe yeah. at some point in the future, organize like a, organize like a tournament or something, yeah. tournament stream for the game where uh, you could be the final boss and people have to battle yeah. it out in the tournament. Yeah, maybe you just uh, have a, we should have a different episode about it, like versus shmup, like fighting shmup, you know, like Twinkle Star sprites, mm -hmm. rival mega. Yes, you know. I think so. those, I think that those could... probably deserve their own deserve their own. Yes, episode. I think so. I think they deserve their own episode. Get more, cause... get more guests for that kind of thing as well. Because I've heard, I'm hearing people wanting to like organize tournaments for that stuff now, and yeah, I saw there... some people uh, picking up Twinkle Star sprites, which is nice, and I see some people getting rival mega as well. The funny thing about rival mega, I think it's been a very successful game because the like the the main player base of Rival Megan is Japanese players, even though it's like a American a Western game developed game. The the like the core fans are Japanese players. Cause it's a solid, you know. They they play it every week, every Saturday. Yeah. What do they play it <laughs> on? Saturday PC. Uh, PC. Yeah. Uh, pretty much everyone's on PC on that game. Yeah, and PC. there's some sort of mod you need to do, right? Or something for no, the netcode. No, no. For the netcode or something? No, no, no. The, no uh, for input lag reduction, yeah, you need yes, to set a yes. unity flag. That's that's one thing. Yeah, I recommend doing. But for the net play, it's just you know get online when other people are online. That's a friendly. And how is the net play on that? Oh, the net play on that is uh, very good because the game is designed to not. Um, the only time you get input delay is when you're controlling the boss on the op enemy screen. So that game has a mechanic where you turn the boss and on, go on the enemy screen. I like Twinkle Star sprites where it's auto controlled. So there's like no lag even when you're playing cross continent. The whole shmup, the dodging and shmup element is lagless, so it's very good, good fun. Yeah, I definitely got to do a whole a whole video about that and uh, give it a shot. I think I think I I remember I we did, I did some live event where I fought Kiwi in that game. I yeah, in on SDG was that a game? Yeah, that was funny as hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear Kiwi. He he's a he's a beast. Yeah, Kiwi. <laughs> And I, oh yeah, another game that came out recently, um, Maiden and Spell. It's like a versus. It's kind of like Sankron Ronde and uh, that kind of games. It adds oh, rollback yeah. netcode, and it's like a fighting. 
it's a very good game and they're still updating to me they think though that game is like mechanically very simple so like to me that's like on the border of like too simple game like the game is maybe a little too simple but it's still extremely good it's easy to pick up so like is that in that's 3D? Also, that's also recommended. It's 2D. It's like 2D, very like a cutesy art style. Um, is it like Twinkle yeah. Star then? I'm trying to imagine no, it, what it's like. Uh, well, while you're I'll talking, I'll pull it up. Here, you keep talking about it. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. You, can, you can find it. Actually, there are a lot of tournaments for that game, which is impressive. Yeah, Maiden and Spell. So the, the way that game works is similar to um, San Connor Ronde and um, Psychic Force 2012. Or, uh, yeah, Psychic Force. I never played Psychic Force, but that series is quite cool. Oh, I got your channel. <laughs> okay, here we go. Damn. Oh, this is funny. So we're watching it on Xerox channel here. I'll pull it up on the screen. Oh, yeah, I don't know why that one pop game video is so popular, but people watch them. <laughs> it's very simple. And another similar game is uh, Acceleration of Suguri. There are a lot of games, but... Made a spell, a very simple game to pick up, and the netcode is very good, so... And probably the most popular game of the group so that's nice so i think there in terms of versus mobs there are a lot of games you can play and like personally i, I watch virtual on if you think of that as a versus mob so it can be hard to play players for that one so how do you attack each other exactly i'm watching the footage here like what's the sort of mm. basics of i mean the game usually like? have you have a basic sh this this characters are very weird <laughs> oh, okay the attacks i mean uh, yeah, they're basic. I mean, usually you just have a forward shot and a wide shot, you know. Just There's auto aim at the enemy, you know. And then you need to stream, like, if it's a normal shot, you need to stream, like, the purple character shooting the orbs. Yeah, I need to stream those bullets, you know. But then, in Medina Spell, a lot of it is down to movement. You, like, push the enemy in the corner. Oh, yeah, that's actually the one of the most common ways to kill a player. It's just like in a shmup, you corner the player with the, the pattern. Like, oh, you screwed up, you streamed yourself into the corner. <laughs> this looks fun. It, how hard is it to find a match mm -hmm. it shouldn't be hard it's quite a popular game and again the net code is so good you can fight uh, people different around parts of the world Cause that's what so, i was about to say I like uh, that's the scary part about playing a shmup like a versus shmup is the idea of the net code you're trying to dodge yeah, 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 and you're getting sure. lagged or whatever but the positive thing the other another similar game to this acceleration of sugary also rollback net code so that's nice that's nice I think, I think if you were interested in Maiden Spell, I think check out this shooting game weekly episode. That's probably the best coverage you can get. Awesome. I'm, I'm going to have to do a video here, or maybe another episode of Electric Live, where we do talk about versus shmups and really dig yeah, into that. Yeah, it's probably... Yeah, that's, that's something. And then yeah. maybe host a... Maybe for one of the shmup slam, like, extra days or something, do a, a tournament of one of them. Yeah, I want to do more live play of Rival Mega Gun with someone at least. Is that... <laughs> Uh, they get, never get sold. Is that the best one? And I saw, yeah, people. Which one's the best? Uh, Rival or Twinkle? Uh, that's that's a hot take thing because I just don't know what. I just don't hear anyone talking about Rival Mega Gun. I, I never heard anyone say anything negative about Rival Mega Gun, but people just don't. There just aren't that many players who play it. Right, right. I usually just play with the Japanese players because they're a pretty chill bunch. And the awesome. code is like perfect. Oh, someone mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, in this chat here you guys hear about the ps4 battery issue if sony discontinued their servers all the consoles are bricks after the battery dies um this is why i was i made a i made a uncut video about this a long time ago about the myth of video game preservation and how basically if you want to preserve anything you're gonna need to hack it you're gonna need to mod it otherwise you're gonna run into crap like this so yeah, yeah. that stuff really sucks the battery to me, it's like if you want to really preserve it, you got to emulate it. <laughs> yeah. Or and unfortunately, or at least like Saturn and Xbox emulation is still bad, unfortunately. Yeah. Or at least mod the consoles to some degree. Like the when they're saying, like for one, people are talking about the PS3 server getting shut down. I'm like, the PS3 is broken wide open. You can uh, you can get any game you want and put it on there, no problem. So I don't think you need to worry about that one. But the PS4 battery thing, that's kind of crazy. But the PS4, I think, is. They're making a lot of progress on hacking that thing open, so probably by the time your PS4 battery dies, you'll be able to mod PS4s and hack them. So I, I did hear the PS4 battery dies in like five years or something. That's definitely oh, like, shit. should be done already. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't. I, okay, yeah, don't don't quote me on this. Like, I only I just heard one person say that. I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of ridiculous. It's five years, you know. That's like way too short. I wonder if it's like less than. I wonder if it's okay. Conspiracy theory time. 
I wonder if it's because they knew the PS5 would be backwards compatible and they didn't want yeah, you know, yeah, they failed. didn't want I mean, this BS of people buying PS4s after market for years on years. They got sick of that crap. So they're like, you know what? <laughs> we'll just self-destruct the PS4 um, right, you know, a few years after the PS5 comes out. So after your yeah, PS4 explodes, you have to buy a PS5. Yeah, companies do that, but they'll never be transparent about that. You know, I think the, the same ones... with like I, I, you know, iPhones and whatever. Oh they're, my gosh! They're, they're most in, infamous. They're the most infamous. Do I have my for, like, iPhone Being here? designed to die. I don't have my iPhone here, but um, so a family member of mine. I don't have iPhones. I have a just crappy uh, Android phone. But a family member of mine got a new iPhone, and then instead of turning in the old iPhone, I uh, got it from them because I use it for the camera, for different things, for lag testing the 60 FPS camera. That thing, after you deactivate it, the battery goes down like it's a video game. The battery, you'll charge it 100%. The battery will go down to zero in like 10 minutes or something crazy. It's absolutely absurd. It's so obviously like kill switch engage that I have to keep it plugged in at all times whenever I'm using the camera because it'll just die from 100% to dead in like 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, this is the stupidest shit I've ever seen. So yeah iPhones are really bad about that. And it's pretty obvious. It's not even like conspiracy. It's pretty obvious they do that. But once you deactivate them, they just self-destruct instantly. <laughs> All right, here's a question. Are you going to play R-Type Final 2? Let's see someone talking about that. Is that kind of... What's little, the release date for that? Uh, end of this month. So like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, I will. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. I, like, I didn't like R-Type Final 1 much, but I'm, I'm kind of curious... Here, let's pull up the let's pull up the trailer here, cause I, I live in my own bubble now, so I. Oh, there was a demo for it actually. There's a demo for it where you can play the first. R, type, final two. Is there a trailer for it? Thirteen yeah, minutes of gameplay. And there's a demo. There's a demo you can download on the PS4 as well. Okay, here we go. Here's the gameplay. But unfortunately, all the, I think all the gameplay from stage one, so it's quite boring. But uh, having played. But Final a good one, stage like, oh, one yeah, matters. Good stage one yeah, it matters. Yeah, does, but but unfortunately, I wouldn't expect from my type final a good stage one because the first game had one of the worst stage ones ever. <laughs> so my, so my is, standards is this, are low. Is this a a separate team than the original dudes, or is this the the, the I, team? I I actually don't know, but it is the same. It is Irem. It's Granzilla. It's the closest you're gonna get. So I have like I have pretty positive expectations. So because what I tried as a demo it was like there's a good amount of features. It's not a bad stage one. It seems like there's a good amount of difficulties. So like I can see it being as good as the first game, and that's probably gonna be good enough for a lot of people. Like I wasn't a big fan of the first game, but like that's it's going kind of shmup actually. Our what do you think about the graphics? I think they were all right. Looks very yeah. Unreal Engine. -y. Yeah, that's what I was. But yeah, it's, but to me, it's like, all right, this is stage one. So like, to me, the, my response is like, I don't I just haven't seen enough. Like, this isn't bad. This isn't a terrible stage one. Like, not a bad stage one at all. But like, see, this this more. isn't exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to like we need to up the presentation. Like, it's because remember you're talking about how art design is important and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely agree here, and I kind of feel like the art design that I'm seeing here is a little bit uninspired. It kind of yeah, looks yeah, yeah, like yeah. StarCraft Two. It looks like StarCraft 2 to me. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. StarCraft 2 came I, I, out I in like 20... They, I think they did know right. 2008 or whatever it was. Yeah, I think the very start of the stage looks kind of sus. But then they add more like, you know, the Bido stuff. Like, oh, yeah, it's hard type. It's hard type. Well, the, so, the backgrounds seem a little... A little... Just bland mm -hmm. to me. And like the... I don't know. Like you said, this is stage one. Yeah. So you never quite know what you're going to get. Yeah, I just, I just want to see more. Like, I'll probably get it around launch, but it's, uh, it's, it's not too bad. And the I think the audio direction stuff were all right. The ships were all right. Mechanics seem decent. Actually, it seems like this game had more emphasis on the scoring than the previous games, because I looked at the tutorial mode a bit, and there's a lot of talk about scoring system, where you get, like, multipliers from oh, using your burst attack and all kinds of stuff. So there might be more more fleshed out scoring system in this game than some previous games. 
Yeah, I'm definitely going to cover it because I think it is going to be interesting at the very least. Whether or yeah, not I think a lot it's of good, I'm not sure. But I think it will be interesting to talk about. Yeah, you can definitely case. get some hot takes on this game. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how it turns out, yeah. there's going to be uh, differing opinions. Well, awesome. And before everyone goes, make sure to go and uh, subscribe to Xerox's channel because it's full of really awesome replays and videos and... The dude is a beast, and whenever a new shmup comes out that's interesting, he's usually one of the first people to destroy it, and you actually can learn how to play the game from his channel a lot of the time. So um, thanks so much for joining. Yep, thanks for having me. Adios, everyone. Time.